From the depths of 2011 to hundreds of videos on YouTube, Secrets of Grindy is a game that I've probably had some of the most fun playing in a long time. While part of that could be attributed to nostalgia from when I originally played this game all the way back in 2016, I think overall it's super polished despite a couple of glitches like this visual glitch or the glitch while sliding into the robot if that was ever fixed. <laughs> I understand why the game's not fully released, but I anticipate it to be released soon with hopefully minimal zombie reworks because that would make this entire guide completely irrelevant. Don't get me wrong, I love this game, but it's been 13 years since the game was originally started. Some of the people that played the game two thirds of my lifetime ago have already graduated college and had kids. Meanwhile, I'm a bit slow to either of those. Anyways, the game is very polished, especially considering how crazy the final boss is. So let's discuss Sanla. Now to begin this optional fight to end the game, you need to collect three catalysts throughout the game. Catalyst of Power, the Catalyst of Awakening, and the Catalyst of Mortality. If you 100% the game, you'll naturally find these, as it requires getting every card, unless this has been changed. For more details, I'll link the wiki down in the description. Here's a brief description of the build that I used. The general trend is that it's very high mobility and defense, because I played this fight on the basis of endurance. My character is level 37, although you can go much higher if you need to. I have every obtainable card in the game. I have no idea what the stats of my pet were at the time, but I'd recommend running a high crit build, so stack damage and chance. Most of my items are endgame items, shown here, with the notable exception being the phase man boots for the energy regeneration. There's a secret item that you can use for this fight if you talk to Mundi and Timing while holding Shidu. You're able to use this shield during the fight which is very nice. I also didn't know about this until later, so please do this for your own sanity. For the active skills that I used, they are as follows. Piercing Dash, level 10. Shadow Clone, level 10. Static Touch, level 5. Reaper's Blade, level 3. Blink, level 3. Barrier, level 3. And Power, guess what? Level 3. <laughs> I had the maxed out bow, the vast majority of the melee skills shown here, and a couple of general skills. Please, for your own sanity, make sure to use potions that are decent. I recorded this past midnight, so I was still running a grinding build for half my attempts, and I still somehow forgot to switch my potions. Onto the actual fight itself, after surviving an onslaught by your fictional father figure, <laughs> and one of the longest cutscenes in the game, Sanla appears. He's got about as many attacks as there are letters in the alphabet, but I'll do my best to explain how to counter each. For starters, every attack can be broken down into can be guarded and can't be guarded. Very simple, right? I'm not going to explain this throughout most of the video, but it can be implied that if the attack is directional, meaning it has a starting point and an ending point, it can be blocked. Sometimes this is at the cost of your entire shield, however this is typically dependent on whether or not you're able to execute a perfect guard. That said, the vast majority of attacks require you to completely dodge them, and mobility is a key part of this fight. Let's start with the most basic attack to explain, Piercing Dash. Some will move to the edge of the arena and rapidly slash across it. This happens at least twice, and I've found that the best counter to this is perfect guarding. If you use a build that I mentioned earlier, this will also restore some charges to static touch. Very nice. The next melee attack, is arsenal, is just called Slash, at least according to the wiki. This one requires a perfect guard. With both this attack and the previous one, I found that it takes a couple of attempts to get a feel for the timing. Exploding Balls is a really funny name for a variation on the attack that I just explained. <laughs> the key here is mobility to avoid the explosions, while also guarding against the slashes. We'll also often use Blink at least once during this sequence. Additionally, something to note is that Zomla may go behind you to instigate a Slash. If this happens, he will move slower and his movement will be telegraphed by orange particles. Now Zomla's slam attack is pretty easy to navigate, simply don't stand in the right areas as the devs did us a favor with the clean telegraphing of this attack and many other attacks that use circles. The ice spikes attack is very similar in nature, just be mobile enough to dodge the attack. This is one of the attacks that I will often use Blink to avoid. Ice Nova was never really a difficult attack to deal with, although it does inflict you with a chill debuff if you're not careful. The snowstorm can be dodged simply by not standing in it. Really solid tutorial guide, right guys? Right? Right? Lightning Storm is much like the slam attack when it comes to navigation and dodging. At this point, you've probably noticed a pattern. Most of his attacks are circular or have a circular hitbox and require dodging. The main exception of this is Snowstorm, which has a much more difficult variation coming up soon, but for the most part, the attacks in the game function very similarly while having slightly adjusted timings for hitbox sizes. Just keep that in mind moving forward. Lightning Blast will send a barrage of randomly scattered blue circles across the ground to telegraph the attack. You can attack Zonla during this attack if he's not occupied. However, I advise prioritizing saving your own health over damaging the boss. Otherwise, I would have told due to run Boots of Bloodthirst earlier, and while I can imagine some insane speedruns involving that item, or potentially pause buffering to switch to that item, this is a tutorial, so this is what we in the business world called insider advice. 
Much like Lightning Blast, Lightning Waves is another barrage of blue circles. However, this one has a double helix pattern to it, so it's much more predictable and often gives you time to buff yourself, heal, or damage Zama. Of course, between all these attacks, I highly recommend keeping yourself buffed as you're able to and do damage when there's an opening. The best advice I can give here is to take it slow at first until you get a feel for the attacks and then take advantage of every opening that you get. Anyways, Earth Spikes is very similar to the other attacks with the circular telegraphing. A point to take note of is that these will temporarily impede movement, but they can be destroyed. Earth Fist involves a summoning of, guess what, three Earth Fists that launch slabs into the air and also do damage. This attack wasn't quirky enough, so the devs also gave him a red laser that fires in eight directions. Firestorm is easy to confuse with Earth Fist, especially if you're playing this at 3am like I was. However, this attack, while the names don't sound similar, is much more potent if you're unprepared. An Earth Fist will be summoned and Zomba will stand still temporarily. This can be a chance to get him some damage, however, be prepared for nearly the entire screen to be covered with fire shortly after. Zomba will indicate the direction of the Firestorm with lines on screen. Zomba also has an attack called Bullet Hell, which gives me flashbacks to Undertale because I'm a degenerate and that was the extent of my middle school life. Anyway, this attack has four components. These are the same lasers that you saw earlier in the dad fight, red laser orbs that will fire out in a circular pattern, seeking projectiles because that's always fun, and purple projectiles that have a slight curve to them the further from Zomla that they travel. Whatever you do, under no circumstances would I recommend attacking Zomla during this attack unless you're really in a comfortable position and you have access to some good ranged attacks. Upon reaching a certain threshold of HP, Zomla will teleport to the middle of the arena and charge up Brazelet to heal himself. You have to damage him as much as possible here, however the damage to Brazelet is capped at half the HP bar, so you're required to do that entire sequence at least once more before entering phase 2. The even better part is that there's 4 phases! After Brazelet is removed from Zama, the arena will be changed as Zama immediately performs the slam attack and the edges of the arena will permanently be set on fire. An exception to this that I didn't catch on my playthrough was that during Zama's lightning attacks, the fire will temporarily be put out because of the rain. Most of his attacks will be similar in nature, however Zama can now cause the entire arena to be filled with exploding balls. That's a fun line to say. There's allegedly a couple very precise safe spots, however I was unable to find that, and found it best to just actively dodge the attack. Zonla also gains an attack that is reminiscent of the Echoes of Madness at Tai Ming, where he can attack you from all four cardinal directions instead of just from the sides. And lastly, Zonla will now have access to a meteor attack, where random points on the arena gain markers for the impact points. This will leave behind more fire. Phase 3 begins after Zonla reaches another HP threshold, at which point he will leap into the air, and the season will change to winter. Frosty Foe, our favorite two elixir snow golem friend, will appear and begin bouncing around the arena. After doing this for a good chunk of time, it'll slam to the ground, summoning ice spikes in eight directions, creating an ice nova on the floor, and throw several orbs of winter that will create snow fists. During this sequence, Cloud will appear and fire off laser beams in all directions, and Phase 3 will officially begin. Frosty Foe must be defeated to progress out of the minion phase and into the fourth and final phase. The attacks that it can use are as follows, a punch or fist slam if the player is far away, a slam to the floor with the same outcome as the introduction of this phase, a charge that has the exact same functionality of a boar, if you remember that from the beginning of the game, I guess the devs ran out of unique ideas after the 938th unique attack, it can summon more orbs of winter that also create snow fists, it can roll around the arena, again, and lastly it has a frenzy where it glows red and attacks even faster. Now during this phase, other minions will spawn as well. Luckily there's not as much to say about them, Cloud will simply move around the arena and randomly fire lasers, plants will occasionally appear and shoot three projectiles at you, plant tentacles can also appear and deal damage, a swarm of bugs will also appear, and act much like the swarm of bats or swarm of ravens. And lastly, because the devs like disabling the player from using 80% of the arena, smaller snowstorms will form and behave identical to the previously mentioned attack. Once Frosty Foe is gone, the season will reset and the fight continues once again in Phase 4. Zonla re-enters the arena with a slam attack, much like he did earlier. The only significant difference now is that Zonla can resummon Frosty Foe for a short time, who can also perform a slam, and then will disappear. Cloud may also appear and will behave much like it did in Phase 3. After all of that, if you manage to kill the hardest boss that the game has to offer, you'll end up with a spectacular ending. I hope the fight is worth the time, and despite the game currently being in version 0.99, it feels amazing to play, so I hope you enjoy it as much as I do. Before I show the full unedited successful attempt that I had, here's my final tip for hard mode. Don't do it. There's absolutely no reason to take a boss that most people aren't able to do, and completely remove damage mitigation. That said, I know there are some masochists in the audience that are deprived enough to try this, so just know that you're completely unable to use health potions or the barrier skill. And without further ado, here's the full demonstration of the Zama fight.
Hey, I hope you enjoyed the video. I started a Patreon if you'd like to support stuff like this. And now, I know what you're probably thinking, TQ, you're a nobody, who's gonna pay you? To which I say, exactly. Might as well start early, so I can pretend like I'm doing something useful with my time. Anyways, it's mostly to pay my artist and editor, so if you want to support them, all those supports are welcome. Any other links are in the description, so good luck saving your fictional father figure from Zomba. Have a good one, y'all. exploding balls.